Okay, we're going to try to isolate some streptococcus. We're going to do a couple of different uh, techniques here. One is I will be doing a throat swab on myself and then streaking it on the blood auger plate. The other uh, technique is where we'll swab along the crevice between the teeth and the gum line, also still trying to isolate for streptococcus. And on that we will streak onto a Midas salivaris auger plate, that is the blue plate here. This is a selective media for streptococcus. There is a dye in it that does inhibit both gram uh, negative and most gram positive bacteria. And then we'll also, um, from the, or the teeth swab, gum swab, inoculate in a Todd Helic broth, which is an enrichment medium also for streptoco uh, streptococcus. So I'm using a sterile cotton tip applicator. Try to go to a back throat swab. And then swab this on the blood auger plate. Always working within the flame for the maintaining the sterile technique. For the second swab, be going along the gum line. Once again, swabbing on the plate. And lastly, I will be inoculating the top helix broth. Once again, swabbing along the, the gum line. These will be incubated in a candle jar because Streptococcus uh, prefers a much lower oxygen concentration than atmospheric air. So we're going to put it into what we refer to as a candle jar for incubation. If you tried to incubate it in regular incubator without any additional supplement, um, it may grow, but on a petri dish it's going to be really, really tiny. So to try to encourage the growth, we will put it in a candle jar, which I will set up in just a moment. Fancy candle jar. Uh, hospitals often have special uh, packs where you, you break a little ampule, stick it in there, and it ties up all the oxygen. We go for the less expensive but tried and true way of having basically a pickle jar with a candle in it. And we use the premise that when we seal this up, the fire is going to burn only as long as there's enough adequate oxygen in there. Then it will go out. And when it goes out, it has lowered the oxygen level inside the candle jar. And this is how we will incubate uh, both the plates, once again, incubated upside down, just like you would in a normal incubator. And we also have the test tube. All these have been inoculated, uh, hoping to grow streps. So we'll incubate them at 37 degrees C for 24 to 48 hours inside this, this jar. Uh, so the, the candle will eventually go out when the oxygen is depleted. And there it goes, it's now out. So now this jar is ready to incubate. Okay, these are the results from the throat swab and gum swabs that I did yesterday, trying to isolate some streptococcus species. First off from the throat swab, I have the blood plate here. Uh, you can see there are colonies growing on that. Now hemolysis, which is breakdown of the red blood cells, um, did not really occur. There's, it looks a little bit greenish near it, uh, which is more indicative of what we would call alpha hemolysis. I will show pictures later of the different types of hemolysis. Um, what I'm very pleased to see is I do not have what we call beta hemolysis, which would be complete breakdown of the red blood cells. It would be completely clear. You'd be able to see through the plate. That is indicative of more severe 
uh, streptococcal bacterial species that cause things like strep throat. So I'm really pleased I don't see that. This is the Midas salivaris uh, plate. This was done from the uh, gum swab. As you can see, there's very tiny colonies. We did get growth. This is a selective media. With the various dyes that are placed in here, it inhibits the growth of gram-negative and most other gram-positive bacteria other than streptococcus species. So that would definitely be streptococcus, which is normally found in the mouth anyway. And then we also inoculated a tube called the Todd Hewlett. This is uh, an enrichment media for streptococcus. And if I swirl that a bit, you can definitely see that it's cloudy. If we move it over the black surface, you might be able to see it a little bit better. That it is not perfectly clear, but it is cloudy. That means that there is bacteria growing in it. So I was able to isolate streptococcus from the back of my throat and along the gum line.